We're kicking off this edition of the Sportsmax Zone with football match day three of the UEFA Europa League concluded earlier Thursday with 15 matches across Europe in one of the day's early kickoffs. Last season's Conference League champions West Ham United clashed with Olympiacos. The Hammers entered the fixture looking to further cement their hold atop Group A, but things did not go quite according to plan. Let's watch the highlights. On an overlapping run, Torrens. Alexandrotos, good save. Fortunis. It's a wonderful goal. Picked it up here, turned right, turned left, advanced. Alexandropoulos, blocked by four nails, back to Rodinay. Rodinay's low ball in, it's an own goal. Obona stuck his leg out, and it's 2 0 to Olympiakos. I'm pretty sure that Ogbonna gets a touch on this. It's curling in. Well, Rodine will probably get it. Just wide. Ball given away, Mikel Antonio here for West Ham. It's flicked off Retzos, it's a slightly awkward one. And it's in the back of the net from Lucas Paqueta. It's 2-1. He's got to do better without the defender. But it's a great strike. It really is a super volley. Lucas Paqueta. Yes, so the win there for Olympiacos former TNT international Brent Sancho joins us via Zoom to talk about this uh, fixture and others. Um, uh, Brent, um, West Ham are group leaders, still are following the result. Um, Olympiacos undefeated in the Greece Super League at the moment and they've won 85% of their matches. But um, I don't think they were expected to beat West Ham today, were they? No, not one of uh, an 11 game winless streak in Olympiacos in, in European competition. Uh, and not when West Ham has had the streak that they've had, uh, breaking records as well. It, it was a, a result against the form guy, uh, as expected. But I think a lot of it came down to the players on the pitch, particularly from a West Ham perspective. Uh, they were nonchalant, non-existent, uninspiring. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about games being played on a Thursday for Premiership clubs and how difficult it is for players to get up for these games. Normally games uh, of course, played with a heavily rotated squad players that are no normally on the peripherals uh, probably don't have enough playing time under their belt. But this was really poor from West Ham today and uncharacteristically poor because if you look at what they've done, their body of work in Europe has been excellent so far. This has certainly been a blot on their on their paper. Yeah, any credit though to Olympiakos who fought hard yeah. and cracked in a couple of good goals. Yeah, and you're right, and, and credit should be given. And, and in a balanced perspective, as much as I can say about uh, West Ham, you have to give credit to Olympia because they played front foot football from the wood go. They were certainly uh, a, a danger all the way through. All, as I said, they, they wanted uh, this win. They could have easily crumbled, Lance, because of the record that they have coming up against West Ham, who's had quite a, a good stringer result. But uh, they were everything opposite of that today, and, and a lot of credit has to be given to them. Uh, they earned their, their, their fee today, uh, but again, you couple that with the poor West Ham result, and that's, of course, the reason why Olympiacos went away with all three points. Yeah, and the loss they had earlier in the group to Freiburg um, was a high-scoring game. They lost 3-2, which means offensively they, they got some goals, it's just that they didn't win. Yeah, they have, they've always uh, showed the, the capability of scoring goals at Olympiacos, uh, but it's keeping goals out on the other end. But they were solid today. They were very solid today. Uh, West Ham didn't really have anything of note. Uh, of, of, of course, the Paqueta goal at the end was one of class, but outside of that, uh, they defended quite stoutly and quite well. I think, you know, going back to, to, to West Ham, Lance, obviously that heavy defeat against Aston Villa in the weekend, four goals to one. This defeat, they have Everton coming up on the weekend. I don't want to suggest necessarily it's a critical juncture for Moyes. It, it not necessarily is. Mm -hmm. But at the same point in time, there are some bad habits that are stepping into the squad, the, the way that they play, the way that they're going about their business. 
that he may need to keep a little eye on and, and may need to obviously try to, to weed that out. Yeah, um, still for West Ham, they'll be satisfied that they're still top of the group, but the group beginning to get tense now because Freiburg are joint top with them on points with six and Olympiakos are now within two points of the leader. So uh, today's result tightens up the group. Yeah, it tightens up the group. I, I, I would want to give West Ham the benefit of the doubt here, Lance, because look, they, we have to agree they've been exceptional in, in Europa uh, from last season and into this season as well. And, and, and of course, you do have these sorts of performances stepping into your team time in. Day in day. Sometimes it does happen. So I, I, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt and I want to suggest that it's probably a blot on their paper. I think they will get the better results and I do feel they will come out of the group genuinely. But I think one thing they have learned today is in this format, and on the Thursday night games, in the Europa League, you cannot underestimate your, your, your opponent at any point in time. I do want to place a little bit of blame on David Moyes. I thought the team was a bit unbalanced. He put a lot of players in there that didn't have a lot of minutes throughout the season, so you could have seen uh, the lack of fluidity in it. Uh, and I thought he may have mixed it a bit. In his post-game interview, he talked about the games that they have coming up. As I mentioned, Everton and the League Cup game next week. But I still felt that he could have put a little bit more balance in the team with players that have been playing more regularly, mixed with some of the, the players that haven't been playing as often as they may have liked. Yeah, well, Brent, another English Premier League club uh, was in action earlier on today. Liverpool hosting the French side to lose at Anfield. Let's see how that late fixture shaped up. Jota going all the way through. How well taken was that? Four goals in his last seven appearances. And it came from a, a Joe Gomez tackle inside his own half. Jota then with a quick take and turn. Now there's something on. Look at this, wide open. It's Delinga in on goal for Toulouse. How about that then? One of the biggest he'll ever score. Where was Chambers going? And it's Alexander Arnold on the top of the picture there that played the linger on side. They couldn't catch him. All he had to do then, I say all he had to do. Jones. Elliot leaves it for Alexander Arnold. And it's in. Wataru Endo has headed in his first ever goal for Liverpool. Short corner, they weren't ready for that. Jones able to wander across unchallenged. And then the best possible idea, give it to the man who delivers a ball into the box better than most, Alexander-Arnold. Gravenberg going through, here's Jones. Jones shot blocked, how about Nunez? Gravenberg decided to go on a driving run. One or two in Liverpool red, but he in particular have been doing that this evening. Jones effort block, a little bit of good luck, too soon. And there will have to be an element of taking a bit more of a gamble. Keller has gambled there and lost. What a chance for Toulouse! Should have taken it, blocked by Alexander-Arnold, a save on the goal line. Oh, the flick from Durham hasn't worked, and Darwin Nunez might be away. nicolaisen has been beaten, oh, this is beautiful! Oh, and he's missed, can you believe it? Gravenberg! He doesn't miss. A beautiful, ugly goal. It was a, a Toulouse trick that started it all. Durham didn't look, the flick didn't go to the right place. Look at the footwork. To set Nikolai Sun down in the first place, to round resters in the second. Diogo Jota. Gakpo, Salah! He didn't need long. That's 16 goals in his last 16 home appearances. Brilliantly done, effortlessly done. Liverpool 5 to lose 1. Yeah, so Liverpool getting lots of goals there. 11 goals in their last four matches in all competitions, uh, Liverpool. And a satisfying result there, Brent, for Jurgen Klopp's men. Yeah, it's a, it was a very good result uh, for, for Jurgen Klopp's men. You know, 
Lance, I think back to last season where a lot of stick was thrown towards Liverpool, particularly in the middle of the park where they, they really struggled. They talk about Thiago Alcantara, of course, uh, Jordan Henderson moved on, Milner who deputised uh, at, at times in the middle of the park. And now look at the type of midfield that they have, young, energetic, uh, of course, expansive in the way that they want to, to play, imaginative, uh, great at breaking lines. Uh, they've really been able to turn a squad around in one season with some of the signings that they've brought in. And you've seen that now with the, the level of play from Liverpool, uh, the level of the energy levels, of course, uh, the enthusiasm to get forward and get back as well. And they, 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 they've proven to be a very, very good team to watch. And, and obviously, one of the teams, Lance, that you will feel that could go on to do uh, good things later on in the future. And I mean by that, challenging for the EPL. And of course, I think they are they should be odds-on favourite to take in the Europa League. Yeah, they're only three points off the top of the English Premier League, Brent. And uh, speaking about a squad, eight changes made by Jurgen Klopp from the side that beat Everton in the English Premier League at the weekend. And still they put in this impressive performance, quite an entertaining performance um, from my standpoint. Talk to me, though, about Endo and uh, Gravenberg, because I thought those two especially were quite impressive for Liverpool today. I'll, I'll start with Gravenberg because I tell you what, Ricardo, he, when he came in, I, I, lo I looked at a lot of uh, Liverpool TV and the flat fans and the blogs and all that stuff. I know I shouldn't be watching that, but I did. And uh, there was a lot of criticism of whether or not he could meet the standard of Liverpool. Of course, left from Bayern Munich, came across to Liverpool, uh, was on the, the, the outside of the Bayern Munich starting team. And he's come in now, although he's not necessarily commanding a starting place in the EPL team. But what I've seen from in the Europa League, you, you, there is so much to look at. There's so much to be to be very much impressed with. Uh, his driving at the defences, his ability to slip a pass, his eye for a goal, uh, his ability to break lines. Those are the sorts of things that I normally, uh, of course, uh, mention when I talk about my, my favourite player now, Jude Bellingham. But that's what you get. That's the kind of feel you feel when you watch Graham Bull play. And he's, he's shown that today and and again i go back to the fact that i mentioned about west ham normally teams that play on a thursday don't have that enthusiasm and drive but look at this liverpool performance today players that are, are, are normally uh struggling for minutes in the, the first team played with a lot of pride and gusto and you're right endo is another player that a lot of eyebrows were raised when uh, Jurgen club made that signing but again he showed up today with his energetic performance and complemented the rest of the midfield. So I think Jurgen Klopp will be a very, very happy man uh, going into this weekend's fixtures. Yeah, for sure. When you speak about uh, Liverpool potentially challenging for the English Premier League title, um, and you say that they are odds and favourites to win the Europa League, and if they're going to go deep in the various competitions, or when they go deep in the various competitions, they will need the depth if they are to go over the line. And from that standpoint, at least, Jurgen Klopp would have been happy to have Gagpo back in his team after a month out with injury. Yeah, and imagine a Liverpool squad that scores five goals and Mo Salah doesn't start. Of course, he came on and, and then he, he scored at the end. But that just shows you the depth that they have from an offensive uh, standpoint. And they really dominated this football game from an offensive standpoint. The, the movement, the interplay, uh, the imagination, as I, I mentioned. Of course, Elliot Jones, Noma Callister. It, it, it was really an impressive. And you're right, when you're talking about going deep in competitions, when you're talking about doing well in the EPL, doing well in Europa, you need a big squad. It, 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 it is no if, ands, or buts about it. Uh, simply because when you get to that stage, what I call the business end of the competition, you need all your players firing in all cylinders. And, and, and from a perspective of what we know uh, transpired to, for Liverpool last season when they, they really struggled, uh, this season a little bit is a lot different because of the depth. And I would imagine as well, Ricardo, when you have depth in a squad, there's a side off the pitch that a lot of people don't recognize. The competition and training is intense. And, and it means that players have to be on their P's and Q's and always wonder whether or not they're going to be in that starting eleven. When you have that in your squad, in your dressing room, in your locker room, it makes things a lot brighter for you in your football team. And I guess you could imagine what that Liverpool training ground is like. Every day, everyone is fighting for a spot on that, on that team. And that would only bode well for, for Klopp and what he wants to do.
Yeah, quick one, Brenton, about 25 or 30 seconds. I know that you said that this was an impressive performance on the attacking end from Liverpool. Um, and I know that because they were left open at the back quite often in this game. In fact, um, Tulu should have had at least one more goal. I mean, the gaping goal. And I think it was Alexander Arnold who um, cleared off the line. So um, Liverpool defensively might still have a few things to work out. Yeah, they do, and they still, because the way Klopp wants to play, he wants to play high up the park, he wants his wing-backs to, to, of course, explore the spaces uh, ahead of them, and they will always be in situations where they end up in 1v1 situations at the back, uh, and the Klopp believes that his centre-halves should have the ability to defend in those sorts of situations. And you're right, I think for them to be successful, yes, we talk about having a huge squad and doing well from that department, scoring goals is great, but if those centre-halves are, are not capable of, of doing their duty in their 1v1 situations that they will have, all that we talk about here would come to naught. OK, uh, Brent, we're going to leave the UEFA Europa League there for today. Um, stay with us. You'll talk some schoolboy football from TNT with us after that. Um, but here are the remaining results from match day three of the UEFA Europa League. Thursday football uh, to Polo beaten at home by Freiburg, um, who go joint top of the table at the moment. Following West Ham slip today, Real Betis 1-0 over Aris Limassol. Marseille winning 3-1 over AEK Athens, who are still without their Trinidadian striker, Levi Garcia, who is injured. 1-1 uh, between Rakow and uh, Sporting. Sparta Prague nil with the Rangers. Atalanta 2-2 at uh, Sturm Graz. Molde 5-1 over Hakan Karabag, beaten 5-1 by Bayer Leverkusen, who are also group leaders. Stad Ren, group leaders as well, defeating Panathinaikos 2-1. Sheriff. Tiras Paul 1-1 with Servet. Ajax beaten by Brighton 2-0. AS Roma 2-0 over Slavia Prague. Um, what goal there from Lukaku as well. And Royal Union. They were 2-1 winners over last. We go to break. Back with more after this. Brent talks some schoolboy football with us from TNT on the other side of the break. <laughs>